Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Aguilar. Now let's turn to a story of public rehabilitation and personal redemption. On Tuesday, the American TV network FX will release a dramatization of the Monica Lewinsky Bill Clinton White House sex scandal. Titled Impeachment, American Crime Story, the series depicts how President Clinton was almost brought down after his affair in the mid-90s with a 22-year-old intern. Monica Lewinsky herself has been involved with the project and it's been described as a triumph for someone who had seemed destined for a lifetime of disgrace. I have to admit, you're a knockout. You must be dating some big DC player. I mean, the ratio in this town is very favorable. Tell me about him. Someone from work. Someone important. Um. I have found myself in possession of some very sensitive information. Information of major national importance. It's beyond imagining. How is the money made? Clicks. The more shame, the more clicks. The more clicks, the more advertising dollars. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now from Boston by the editor-in-chief of Experience magazine and contributing editor to Politico magazine, Joanna Weiss, who writes about the intersection of politics and culture. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Much appreciated. So two decades later, a dramatization of the uh, Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton White House sex scandal. Tell us more about the project. Well, this is a, a project that was born out of and reflected by the, the Me Too uh, movement that, that, you know, in 1998 was, it was not even in anyone's radar. And to, to watch this series now in the framework of Me Too is to just, is to, is to completely reconceive the way not only uh, the, 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 the way that we, in, the, the way the entire country really handled and uh, uh, viewed this scandal. At the time, you know, the 1990s, Monica Lewinsky was shamed. She was, it, this was a, a, a partisan investigation that she was swept up in. Uh, people who were partisan uh, supporters of Bill Clinton were very much in his camp. There was, they were, there was, there was not a widespread sympathy for the idea that a 22 year old uh, who was in a relationship that was, you know, uh, Consensual, obviously, uh, or, or, or consensual by by all accounts, but but not equal in any way, should be treated with anything uh, but some degree of sympathy. Instead, she really became a public laughing stock, and that was abetted by the entire nation. And so, this is a series that's told from her perspective. Uh, the the producers of the series courted her, came to her, asked for her input, made her a producer gave her input onto reportedly every page of the script. And so it's a completely different retelling of a story that people lived through 30 years ago or 20 years ago. Absolutely, I remember well um, the, the period. Um, and, and of course, um, you know, Monica Lewinsky, an executive producer, I understand, on the, 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 the film, which, uh, you know, that essentially means that she's deciding what, you know, does and doesn't go on screen. I mean, so she is quite literally telling her own story, which is the opposite of what happened to her 20 years ago, as you said. Very much, yeah, she was completely, she had no control over the narrative. And, you know, this was a story that was driven by people in the Washington establishment, in the legal establishment. It was very much a politically driven story. And once her name got out there, once she was revealed to be the person at the center of this scandal, it just took off. Uh, there were all kinds of, you know, the, things written about her. And then on late night television, she was a constant joke. And there was really never any regard for her humanity. And when you look back now at some of the clips, I was watching some of the old clips on Saturday Night Live, which is a very popular sketch comedy show in the US. And uh, the way that she was mocked is just shocking to see right now. We have such a completely different lens on it. But I think there was a real 
casual cruelty in the culture that that frankly everyone uh, who was cognizant of that was was complicit in at the time. And I think you watch that, you watch it today, and you you can't help but feel a bit of shame for the way the entire country comported itself. Well, that's actually a very good point, but that was, as you said, many years ago, and today there's been a shift in, in perceptions, you know, about position and privilege helped by the support and solidarity of, as you mentioned, the Me Too movement, which has raised fresh questions about the dynamics between young women and powerful men. Absolutely. And, and Monica Lewinsky does not fit into the kind of classic Me Too mold. I mean, uh, you know, the, the the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, recently was was forced to resign, and that's because he there, uh, many people came forward and accused him of harassment, a real pattern of harassment of young women who were in his orbit, working for him, working around him, and it was this was seen as such unacceptable behavior that he had to resign. Uh, now. In, in the 1990s, that was not accepted as a, a you know, as, as verboten behavior. It was fairly well known and understood that there were many accusations against President Clinton. And yet the, the groundswell of anger was absolutely not there. And so Monica Lewinsky, instead of being seen as someone who was a victim in this, was seen as a, a you know, a, a participant. And th the only thing that makes it different, though, is that she has said and and has never said otherwise that this was a consensual relationship this was poor judgment she says on her part it was certainly poor judgment on the president's part uh but it wasn't the you know a sort of uh classic victim uh you know that she, she had agency in in the affair and she had agency in the aftermath and that what make that's what one of the things that makes her story so fascinating right now is that she is telling it warts and all. She does not come across as a pure victim and she does not come across as a hero in this in this series. She comes across as a complicit player who was naive, who was young, who was self-deluded, but who played a role and who was, uh, you know, but all, above all, a human being with feelings and uh, perceptions who was just swept up into this and then turned into a political object. Yes, that, that's a good analysis there. So can it be said that Monica Lewinsky has now found her voice? I mean, she gave a TED talk, we saw a little bit of it at the outset, on the price of shame, and it's been viewed more than 12 million times. That's right. Well, in 2014, she first kind of took a step back into the limelight. She wrote a, a very widely read piece in the magazine Vanity Fair, uh, where she started to tell her side of the story. And it, at the time, there was some skepticism, I think, about why and whether she should come out and own this part of her life. But I think the story was so big. The story was so broad. It, it, she could not separate herself from the story. Wherever she went, she was associated with it, caught up in it. Her name was so well known that I think the best way for her to assert her power, her agency, her humanity was to own the story completely and say, well, now I'm going to share my side and I'm going to tell you about the human being on the other side of this. And this has been her theme now for the past few years. She has presented herself as an anti-bullying advocate, as someone who wants to show, I mean, now, you know, at the time there was not social media. Now people are regularly shamed on social media for things that they did in the past, for transgressions they make in, in the present. Uh, and sometimes the, the scope of the shaming is much greater, much greater than the, the transgression itself or the perceived transgression. And so what she's trying to do is say, every time you shame somebody publicly, you need to remember there's a human being on the other side of that. And that's a very good note to end on. Uh, Joanna Weiss, uh, who is, of course, the editor-in-chief of Experience magazine and contributing editor of Politico magazine, thank you very much indeed for joining us there from Boston. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and around the world. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.